I'm back, the headless YouTuber, without my trusty pug Pudge today. I think today's video is gonna be my first shorty, which is something I've been wanting to do for a while, which are just kind of like little how-to videos or tutorials or, um, I hate using that term, t tips and tricks, but honestly, it's like, they're tips and tricks. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. So today's shorty is going to be about spider mites. So my husband brought a rubber tree to his work, I want to say two years ago, and I gave him um, this small little rubber plant and I just kind of gave him basic instructions and then I totally forgot that he had it. And then one day last week, he texts me a photo and he's like, is it thrips? <laughs> and I was like, why, what, how, like, what are you talking about? And then sends me a picture of the rubber tree and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I totally forgot about that thing. This poor plant has not been fertilized or repotted or anything since like 2019. <laughs> and it's probably like tripled in size. So it is a trooper. And because it has spider mites, like a pretty bad case, I thought, okay i'll just have him bring it home i'll replace it with a snake plant because a snake plant is way less maintenance and um and then i can use this plant for a video so i do have it with me here today and she's looking a little rough let's see if i can show you the whole plant give me a second to adjust the camera all right so this is her the backlighting is not great i'll try and give you some better shots of it in a bit but you can kind of see here it's got that classic spider mite damage which is characterized by sort of this like powdery texture on the leaf blade you'll see some stunted leaves like this uh, some of the leaves that sort of just grow in a little bit wonky and weird I think you might be able to see some webbing right there you can kind of see that webbing in the light. That is spider mite webbing. It's very, very fine and hard to see. And you will see here that this brand new leaf that came in is also really warped and wonky. And this is characterized by being sort of attacked by spider mites. So very similar to thrips, um, spider mites will also make your new leaves look really mangled. I'm not quite sure yet if I want to save this plant per se. It's getting a little bit big for his office and I don't really have a place to put it at home. I already have a big rubber tree and I don't really want to give away a plant that has this bad of spider mites. So just full disclosure, I do think that I'm, I'm going to use this plant sort of as a example of how I would diagnose and treat spider mites but I don't actually think I'm going to keep it. Let me um, take the camera off the tripod to see if I can give you some better shots. Well, okay, I can at least show you what spider mites looks like right here. So all of this white sort of dusty stuff you see, that's all spider mites. And they don't really visibly move very fast, but they do sort of crawl around if you move them around. You can see this one is just covered in in spider mites but look at all this new growth i feel really bad like throwing this out just because it's so resilient i just yeah I, I don't know if i can afford to have a plant with spider mite just kind of chilling in the house all right so i am gonna get it out of the soil because i don't want any spider mites that are hanging around in the substrate to be the reason why the spider mites come back. Okay, so now that I have most of the substrate off, what I'll do is get this wrapped in maybe like a Ziploc bag or just get it covered somehow so that I can prep it for a bath. I'm doing this to protect 
it from um, getting wet when I'm washing the rest of the plant down just because there's like soil attached to this still and I don't really want that going down my drain. I just don't want it to get like muddy and gross and this just kind of keeps things clean. Before I actually get this into a bath, I am going to just do a manual wipe down or scrub down of the leaves while it's dry with this Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap, and this is just the unscented one. Although I do recommend the peppermint if you're dealing with pests. I just don't have any right now, and I don't wanna to have to buy another bottle while I have this big thing. And honestly, I bought this a long time ago. This lasts forever. Um, I don't ever use things like Dawn dish soap or dishwashing soap. I know a lot of people swear by it, and they, they say it doesn't do anything to their plants, but Dawn is made to remove grease, but I don't want to use that on my plant and remove some of that natural like wax that's on the leaves that keep it sort of protected against fungal things and bacterial things. So pure castile soap is my go-to. If I can go more natural, then I will. So what I'll do is just get a little bit on my hands and just kind of wipe it down. I know it seems kind of odd to do this dry, but this has been like a way that really makes sure that the leaf gets saturated with soap. And you can see here that it's like really on there. It's super thick. And by the time you wash it off, it gets really sudsy and it gets really clean. I just find that when the plant is wet and you're, and you're washing it down, it's like really slippery and you kind of miss areas. So by doing this, by giving it sort of a little massage, you're really, really getting in there and I'm just gonna do every single leaf. Of course, you guys don't have to apply it this way if you're not comfortable with it. it. It is a little bit more difficult applying it dry, obviously, but I've always just had the best results with doing it this way, specifically for spider mites, because although they're they're not as like pesky as thrips, they do have the tendency to come back. So if you can get it nice and clean, the first treatment, that's kind of your best bet at not wanting to chuck your plant against a wall. But yeah, I mean, if you want to wet the plant first and then get it nice and um, clean, then it's totally up to you. I just much prefer to do it this way. Also remember you want to do the petioles. So this little part here that connects the leaf blade to the stem, um, you want to get that too because spider mites like to dwell sort of in this general area and you'll see a lot of webbing in between here and then they go on to the bottom of the leaf blade. And typically with spider mites, you'll actually find them more so underneath the leaf than on top. So uh, yeah, you wanna make sure that you are cleaning off the stem as well. Now that this has been sort of wiped down, I'm gonna let it sit for maybe five minutes and then I will take you over to the sink and we'll get it cleaned off. I have two different kinds of sprays here. This one is just a Safer's insecticidal soap. This one I just bought from a local hardware store here in Canada. This brand and this kind of spray is like one of the most common ones that you can find here. And this one says that it kills insects. Wait, that's not very thorough. 
It says this one controls aphids, mealybugs, spider mites, white fly, soft brown scale, all these other pests on outdoor trees and stuff. Anyway, yeah, this is the one that I use the most often. If you are in the States though, I would recommend this spray. This is just the Bonide Captain Jack, Captain Jack? Captain Jack's dead bug spray. This one kills thrips, spider mites, uh, leaf feeding beetles, sawfly larvae, and some other things, like outdoor, more outdoor pests like caterpillars and stuff. I don't ever use pesticides or insecticides outside. I only use them on my indoor plants. I'm not actually going to take you in there with me just because it's kind of self-explanatory. You just literally spray the whole entire plant, the front and the back sides of the leaves, and then I'm going to just leave it in the tub and let it dry on its own for, I don't know, two, two three hours. Uh, just make sure that if you're gonna be spraying something like this indoors that you're masked, you have a fan running and preferably like your vent fan going in your bathroom. Typically, I would love to use this outside. I normally do all of my insecticide spraying outdoors on my balcony, but it's pouring today. It's raining really hard and it's cold, so I don't really wanna go out there. So I'm just gonna be doing this in my shower. I don't wanna have to bring my camera into the shower, so I'm gonna do that off camera and then I will meet you back here. Good morning, everyone. I'm saying good morning because it's the next day. I had to deal with a few Pudge-related things yesterday. He was at the vet all day. It was a very anxious day, but um, everything's all good. So I'm going to just pick up where I left off. So last night, I literally just put this in the shower. I sprayed it with the Safer's insecticide. So now what I'm gonna do is actually get this repotted. And the reason I'm gonna repot it is because I've had some time to think and I feel like after everything this poor plant has been through, it deserves to live. So I'm going to just make it work. I'll probably try and find a place either in my bathroom or my office for it, but I'll need to like put some grow lights in there. But he's staying, he's not gonna be thrown in the trash. So I am gonna repot it. And then after I'm done repotting it, I want to just take you a little bit into um, the predatory mites that I'm using right now. I already have some of my pre-made uh, aeroid mix here. And if you want to know what I put in my soil, I do have a dedicated video on it and it's called Let's Talk Soil, I think. And I'll throw the thumbnail up just so you know what you're looking for. The roots are actually looking pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with how my husband has cared for it. I'm very proud of him. Oh no, I need to sneeze. It's dusty in here. Sheesh. This one actually doesn't have a drainage hole. So I'm just gonna put a little bit at the bottom, a little bit of soil, I mean, at the bottom. But before I fill it with soil, I am gonna use some mycorrhizae on here and I am running low, I need to restock. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the root ball. I am gonna water this because the root ball is actually already wet. And I am going to fertilize because this thing is showing signs of a lot of growth and it has not been fertilized in years. I've got my triple threat here. I have the liquid gold leaf, Kelmag, and Marfil. Also, it has been brought to my attention that some people purchased a fertilizer called Just Gold Leaf on Amazon with totally different packaging. It's not this one and uh, they used it the way I've recommended it. That is not the fertilizer I use. The only liquid gold leaf is in this packaging and you can only get it from their actual website, which is liquidgoldleaf.com, but right now they're not shipping out of Europe. My friend did tell me that the formulation is comparable, but I have not tried it myself, so I can't make any recommendations on it. But yeah, just note that they're not the same. I, I am testing out two other fertilizers right now 
that I hopefully can or can't make a recommendation for you guys. I always try and test it out for like a good period of time and see some documented results before I say anything on my Instagram or my YouTube. So those ones are available in North America. So hopefully those work out so that you guys can find something uh, that's actually available. Oh, frick, what was I saying? Okay, so I'm going to make my little batch of fertilizer here so i'm just going to kind of eyeball a dilution amount for this little cup here i do not recommend doing this but i've been using all three of these for a good while now and i kind of already know a good sort of eyeballing amount oh the smells of all three of these are gnarly Oh yeah. Okay, so you can see this thing is freaking wobbling around like crazy. So while it's while the roots get restabilized into this new substrate, I am going to use some rocks to uh, kind of anchor it into the pot. Keep in mind that these rocks are temporary. You don't want to fill the top layer of soil with too much like weight and too many rocks because you do want it to be able to aerate out. So I'll keep these rocks here for maybe like two weeks and um, just wait till it kind of anchors a little bit better and then I'll remove them or just leave one or two instead of four. But for now, this guy is pretty much all set and I'm gonna just probably stick him in my office and hopefully it uh, has a little bit of a glow up and I can include this in a plant update video. Now I'm gonna show you the predatory mites that I'm using right now. Not the greatest lighting and I'm hopefully going to find one that's moving around. Oh, there we go. Okay, so can you see these little guys sort of running around everywhere? There's so many of them. Look how tiny and cute these are. You can kind of see them moving around on here. They're like, hey, what are you doing? Put us back. So these are spikel ultimites. I think I'm saying that right. And they're very, very similar to like Swirsky mites in that they're really tiny. Look how like microscopic they are. You can hardly notice that they're there once they're on your plants. So I really recommend these kinds of mites if you're a little bit squeamish with introducing predatory bugs into your collection. You really hardly notice that they're there unless you're really looking. So I have about 10 packets of these uh, in my large EXO. And honestly, I have not had a pest issue in any of my EXOs for kind of a long time. And I do think it's because I always have some of these guys around typically. So I'm just gonna go onto the, what is it? The Copper website. Okay, so the one I just showed you are Spikel Ultimites, and that's a predatory mite. It's called Neocelios. I don't even know why I'm attempting this name. Um, and you can use Spikel Ultimites for two spotted spider mites, fruit tree red spider mites, citrus red mite, broad mite, and cyclamen mite. I would say that my only warning, not that I really have any scientific proof that this is correlated, but I did notice that when I used a batch of Swirsky Ultimites, there was one batch in, in particular where they there were so many of them. They were all over the place, like it was almost too much. And almost every single one of my plants in that specific exo was pushing out like an excess of extra floral nectaries it was burning through a lot of the plants and i think that they, they could kind of feel the presence of those mites so they were pushing out efn and i don't know if that's correlated but i do know that those two things kind of happened at the same time so i would make sure that you're not like overdoing it but make sure that you also have enough for the space that you're using um or the space that you're trying to cover god this thing is so dirty okay so i think that is it for today's video 
I hope that you guys kind of got some info out of it. it I know that it wasn't the most sort of thorough sort of how-to but I kind of just wanted to show you just a general idea of what I do when I'm when I find spider mites on a plant specifically a plant like a rubber tree which is very very prone to something like spider mites but if you guys have any questions about predatory mites spider mites treatment anything that maybe I didn't cover please feel free to leave that in the comments I hope you guys enjoyed the first shorty hopefully I can do another one of these on thrips I just I've started to put that video together. I'm just not really happy with it. I feel like I don't have the footage and the information that I really need. But there is a lot of good information about thrips on Instagram, on YouTube. I feel like you guys don't really need me to tell you that. I just kind of wanted to put together my own version. But I took, an, I took advantage of the fact that this plant was just infested with spider mites to make this video. So anywho, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.